Hello everybody, sorry for the delay. Dimitri was hiding under the sofa. I don't think he appreciated that his fans were waiting for him, so I had to go and fetch him. So here's Dimitri and here's me to say hello. And we're going to be looking at some challenging, but not too challenging, multiple choice comprehension today. And I hope it will be an interesting change from all the maths we were doing in recent weeks. And then, actually I thought it was quite a fun creative writing lesson that we did last week. Do not forget that you can send me and Dimitri a piece of work for completely free marking. Why not take advantage of the offer? There are details in the video description and I'll post something in the comments as well. Uh, don't forget that the worksheet for every lesson is always linked in the video description, isn't it Dimitri? Dimitri always takes a great hand in writing the worksheet um, and uh, yeah, it's a really good idea to practice the questions before the lesson. Uh, if you're on my mailing list, I usually send out the worksheet on Saturday morning so you've got the whole weekend to have a go before the lesson on a Tuesday. All right, Dimitri, are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. Are you ready to go? All right, well, let's get started. He says, oh, he's off. Dimitri's off. All right, Grigri's coming in. Chaos is going to occur. Let's get started. So, um, I've got the... Hang on a sec, that's not right. There we are. I've got the passage above. And I've got the questions down here. How is that for fantastic organization? I'm a live streaming pro. Lots of comments coming in. Lovely to see you all. Um, uh, differently, they are wrong. Right, that having been said, let's start with question one. We're not looking at the whole paper. If you've looked at the worksheet already, you will see that I've edited it down. So there is a... The, there were just a few questions that we're going to be looking at today and, and, I'm going, and I am going to try to talk. I'm going to try to get through them as quickly as possible. Right. OK. People who say I am lagging, um, that will be at your end. Turn down the quality. OK. Question one. In line two, the phrase most private and local of constructions means that. So the first thing we do when we do this after we read every question, we go back and read the relevant bit of the passage and it's right in front of you. Is Den Building a lost art? A generation or two ago, our edge lands were full of these most private and local of constructions, which have more in common with badger sets or fox lairs than any human habitation. So we just need to unpack what this means. So some time ago, a generation or two ago, um, our edge lands were full of these things which have more in common there so they're more like animal homes than places where humans live um, and our edge lands were full of them private and local of constructions what does private mean it means that it's just yours what does local mean well that could mean several things let's have a look at the options dens were constructed on building sites uh, there's nothing to indicate that. The dens are constructions. There's nothing about construction sites. So we can eliminate that option. Dens were built as temporary structures for children to play in. Maybe. But there's nothing here to suggest temporary. There's nothing about being temporary in this section. So that doesn't really match. Dens were secret places characteristic of an area. So secret, that matches private quite closely. Characteristic of an area that could match local. That's one interpretation of local. They match the area in some way. Each area has its own dens. Overhung with white thorn that marks the border between a few acres of uncaped wet meadow and the perimeter of a private golf course. So we're in between. A teepee-like vertical frame has been attempted using pliant elder branches, which in turn have been cross-woven, then packed with grasses to describe its presence. That's all about the nature of the thing, but that's going beyond line seven. So lines five to seven, we know that it's in a ditch. We know the ditch has got white thorn growing over it. We know that the ditch is the border between the meadow and the edge of the golf course. And we know that um, there's a frame like a teepee, which of course is a kind of tent, that has been attempted, which is an interesting verb to use for putting this up. The writer tells us that the den has been built in woods. Well, it's got scrub growing over it, but it clearly tells us it's a ditch on the border between the meadow and the golf course. Nothing about woods. The den has been built in a disregarded and unattractive place. Now, you might not know the word disregarded, but is it an unattractive place? Well, it's a ditch and it's got thorns growing in it. 
So that sounds quite believable. So that could be. Maybe this is right. The den has been built on a golf course or sports centre. No, it's between the meadow and the golf course. But it's not on a golf course. It's been built in meadows, same applies. It's been built on private land. Could be. Doesn't actually tell us uh, who owns the land, whether it's private land or public land. It probably is private land if it's between a meadow that's going to be owned by the farmer and a golf course that's going to be owned by the golf course company. Probably is private land, although we don't actually know that. What we do know is that this is a scruffy place. It's a ditch with, you know, thorns growing over it. And that just seems a better match. Now, if you know what disregarded means, which means that it's overlooked, no one cares about it, no one... No one people have stopped paying attention to it, literally, then that fits even better. But even without knowing what that means, you can see that B is likely to be a better match. Good. Onwards. What's going on in the comments? We have several people saying they passed the 11 plus, and that makes me very happy, because I'm delighted for you, but it also makes me especially happy that having passed the 11 plus, you're still here, which I find utterly incomprehensible, but also rather wonderful. So thank you for turning up. On to the next question, this is why Arrays, lots of questions in the way. Okay, this one straddles the page break, sorry about that. Lines 13 to 15, so let's pull those up. Tell us that, okay, so lines 13 to 15, let's bracket those off here so that we know we're looking at. Okay, we don't need to see that part of the question now. We know we're talking about lines 13 to 15 and we want to know what they tell us. So, the entry point is a crawl space to the tent that only the slimmest child can enter. Beaver-like. That's a lovely description. Like a beaver. So sort of squashed quite flat. Flat tail behind, I guess. It's wiggling in. Wriggling in. Only the slimmest child can enter beaver-like into its hidden space. A hole has been left in the crown. What's the crown? It must be on top of the construction to act as a chimney for the fires that will kipper the clothes and hair of its occupants with wood smoke. Okay. So it's got a hole in the roof. There's a little hole to crawl into, that only a little child can crawl into. Uh, the hole in the roof is a chimney for fires, and if you light the fire in there, stinking. Stinking like a live streamer after an hour under the lights. It doesn't seem like there's anything here to suggest that, that the roof is well constructed, and there's certainly evidence that it's not well constructed, because it doesn't let the smoke out very well. So, I think this one is pretty certainly not the right answer. The dens often burn down, now this isn't the category of things that well may be but may well be true, but you have to base your answer on the text in front of you, and there is nothing here to suggest that the tent will burn down. There'll be fires, but they will make the clothes and hair of the occupants stink with wood smoke. It wouldn't be wood smoke if it was the canvas of the tent that was burning. So no, there's no evidence for that. It could be true, but there's no evidence for it, and it could be true is not a reason to choose that answer. The occupants of the den often smell of fish. So kippering could be about creating a smell of fish. So it could be about cooking kippers 